Hey everybody, Ann here, and guess what? I have some big, big news. I changed shirts. <laughs> Seriously though, today I wanted to take a look at some things that I've showed you before, but I want you to see how they've changed. And I wanted to run an idea by you. I don't know if I'm a crafty person, but I may be able to pull this off. And also, I've got some questions um, about some things. There's conflicting information out there on the internet. So I'm quickly learning that the people who answer questions in my comment section are the smartest people on the internet. So I'm relying on you guys to keep me straight. So here, take a look at this cool thing. See that? It's gotten a lot bigger. So has this. And it is starting to turn kind of orangish, orangish a little bit. Um, and it is, it's a semi-firm, I mean it's a firm mushroom, but it's not woody. So let me get another shot of this. I'm not sure if this is in focus or not. But you can see that it is starting to turn a yellowish orangish color, which is really exciting. Okay, see those? Those are coming out of the top of the stump. They were little teeny tiny balls. And they are also starting to turn yellowish to orangish as well as, let's see if I can find it, this one. So, I'm going to compare these with what I searched for on the internet. I had searched for um, white, firm, cauliflower looking mushrooms. And this is what I came up with. I found this mushroom posted on a Reddit forum. And of course, you got to be careful with, you know, what you read on Reddit because, uh, you know, armchair geniuses and whatnot. But this guy wanted to know what this mushroom was. And um, this is exactly what my mushroom looked like when it first started growing. So this guy didn't know what it was and he ended up posting pictures as it matured and everybody pretty much agreed that they thought that this was a young chicken mushroom so take a look at how it matured this is uh i don't know how long it was but then this was right before it harvested and here's another picture of a young chicken mushroom and yet one more of a young chicken mushroom and this is actually a chicken of the woods mushroom that is a huge, huge blessing because when I was in Ohio, I was hiking and exploring for mushrooms and whatnot, and I found a huge, huge chicken mushroom, and um, I harvested it. I didn't take all of it off of the tree because they can grow back, and uh, as I was examining all my different mushrooms that I had that day, a guy drives up to me. He's in a, you know, long hair. He had a tie-dyed t-shirt on, which was awesome. Um, he said, excuse me, ma'am, but did you find a beautiful colored mushroom out there in the woods? And I said, yeah, yeah, I found it. And um, he says, well, can I pay you for it? And I'm like, Ugh. I went and got my whole bag of mushrooms and I just gave them all to him. And he's like, oh my gosh, my dad loves these. He loves to cook them up and everything. And he said, are you sure I can't give you some money for it? And I'm like, no, I come here all the time. I'll, I'll be able to find them. Well, I never did end up going back, but I did come out here. And if this, if this is a chicken mushroom, I'm gonna be watching it very, very closely. They are a choice edible. They are very high in protein. They are delicious and you can cook them up like chicken fingers and they taste just like chicken, honestly. So, oh God, I need to brush my hair. Um, if this is a chicken mushroom, I am amazingly blessed. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this thing over the next few however long, just to see how it develops and uh, hopefully it'll stay kind of damp and moist out here so it'll grow. Now, remember when I was first, you know, when I first came out here and I was getting rid of this trash pile over here and I found these weird little spongy looking things and this one has something growing out of it. Um, they've been multiplying. They have been multiplying and they go from getting really dried out to when it rains. Um, they, they just perk back up. This one looks pretty cool too. It's got something growing out of the middle of it. So uh, remember that and I'm going to show you something else. Remember this pretty lichen growing on this little stick here that I was so fascinated with? Well, I brought it back out here to the woods and I keep finding 
these beautiful sticks with all different kinds of moss and lichen. This, I think, is actually a moss. I don't know. I mean, I felt pretty sure I knew what it was. Some people say it's usnea. I don't think it's usnea, but that, that's beside the point. What I am looking at is its beauty and something like this, too. That log, the little stick with all those cool mushrooms on it, eventually they will dry up and just get really hard. And look at this, too all different colors of this lichen on this. It is just absolutely gorgeous. There are all kinds of moss growing everywhere. This could, I could actually get up. Right here too on this tree, I could get some of this up. And this is just attached to the bark. I could get that up too. There's got to be a use for all of this beauty. I did some looking around. I did a Google search for moss and lichen art and this is what I found. Isn't that gorgeous? That looks like it's still alive. And here is a big huge wall piece. I love how they've layered it and let it kind of fall down over the edge. This is one of my favorites that I found. And then here is a little tiny baby one. Isn't it gorgeous? I've got this stuff growing naturally all over my property in abundance and it's like it's just so freaking pretty. But I got to thinking, God, there's got to be a use. What can I do with all of this stuff? So I looked around on the internet and apparently there's a market for this kind of, well, art. And it looks like it's pretty basic. You basically just find the stuff and glue it on like this mesh or some other kind of board or something and, you know, in, in like a frame. And some of them are alive and some of them are dead. I imagine to keep them alive, you'd have to keep misting them. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm going to try and make make a little one and just see how it goes. The one thing is I, I don't want to harvest too fast, especially the moss, because um, it may take a little too long for that moss to come back and I don't want it to be depleted, so I'll, I'll use that sparingly. So I may turn into a crafty person. Okay, my next question is about potatoes. Now, these are starting to chit, um, so I mean, I could plant them, I guess, but I think this is a russet potato. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, looks like a russet potato, but I got this in the store, and I know I've heard that they sometimes spray them with something that keeps them from chitting, but I kind of want to plant some potatoes. So what do you think about planting store-bought potatoes? Now I've heard from some that it's perfectly okay if they're chitting. You can cut them up and put them in the dirt and they'll grow just fine. But then I've heard others say that, no, you don't want to do it. It's going to be diseased. You know, you're not going to get any potatoes and blah, blah, blah. So what is your general consensus of if you have some potatoes that you bought from the store and they're chitting, can you plant them? and is it worth your time? Will you get good tomatoes or will they be diseased? My next question is about eggshells. I've been saving them. I don't think I'm gonna keep them in this plastic bag though. I'm gonna look for maybe a paper bag or something. I don't want them to get all moldy and whatnot. Um, these are relatively newly cracked eggs. But I've got some questions about eggshells. I know that to use them in your garden to uh, provide additional calcium to your plants, or even to feed them to your worms in your worm bin, you have to sterilize them or sanitize them. Uh, some people say, do it in a microwave. I don't have a microwave. Some people say, do it in an oven. I don't have an oven. Is there another way to sanitize these eggshells so they're safe to be crushed and used um, to supplement the soil or, uh, or to feed to my worms? Can, can I boil them and then dry them out? Can I pressure cook them, maybe? I don't know. So uh, you guys let me know what you think. I've heard different things from different people, and I've heard from some people you don't even need to do anything to them. Just crush them up, and you know you could throw them in some vinegar or just uh, boil them and use the water to uh, water your plants. So I don't know. Um, I need advice, and you guys are super smart. And believe it or not, in the middle of all this rain, the sun has came out. So Betty and I have just been enjoying ourselves on the porch. There she is. She's not even moving, a, moving an inch. She's been really good. 
But anyhow, so I hope you have some answers for me and I hope you enjoyed this video. That's all I got for you today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.